Now, path to a BRICS currency is challenging. This is the article. I'll just summarize it. One can go through the website and get a gist of this uh, or read through this uh, thing. Uh, the article discusses the challenges and complexities of realizing a common currency amongst the BRICS, BRICS country, which is basically Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. The envisioned BRICS currency has faced obstacles due to their diverse economic structures varying level of development and differing policy priorities. Despite discussions about creating a new currency, it remains a concept with several issues. These prerequisites for establishing an international currency are stability, acceptance, widespread use, a stable political system, trust, and a robust financial infrastructure. The BRICS currency lacks these prerequisites, including coordination in areas like exchange rates and monetary policy. The article suggests that achieving a common currency might be a distant dream due to significant socio-economic differences amongst BRICS countries. Instead of pursuing an immediate grand vision, the countries could take an incremental step. These steps could involve settling trade in local currencies, establishing currency swap arrangement, harmonizing financial markets, and creating clearing houses. By settling trade in local currencies, the BRICS countries can reduce reliance on major reserve currencies and enhance economic cooperation. The article also highlights the importance of fostering a strong financial architecture and governance system before introducing a BRICS currency suitable for international trade and payment settlement. The article concludes that while the idea of BRICS currency faces substantial challenge, focusing on gradual cooperation and strengthening economic ties could create a foundation for future monetary collaboration amongst the BRICS nation. So, yeah. The next is uh, regarding income tax. Uh, the number of people filing income tax returns has increased, which is not surprising uh, considering the efforts to bring more individuals into the tax net. However, the increase isn't entirely positive since the proportion of taxpayer in the country remains small and many tax returns show zero tax liability. In the fiscal year 23, about 74 million people filed income tax returns, which is almost a 6.5 rise from the previous year. This growth in return filing seems driven by two factors. First, expanding the range of goods and services subject to tax at the source had led to more tax return, allowing people to reclaim these taxes. Second, the new form of 26 AS makes it easier for people to recognize transable transaction, improving compliance. Yet there is a concern about sharp rise in zero tax return. In the last three fiscal year, around 70% of the filed returns had no tax liability. This could suggest that while more people are filing returns due to government measures, they might be finding ways to avoid paying taxes or individuals with no tax liabilities are being compelled to file returns for other reasons. Interestingly, the number of tax filers who actually paid income tax has dropped from 3.57 crore in 2019 to 20 to 2.23 crore in 22 to 23, meaning less than 2% of the working age population is currently filing taxes. Despite this decrease in tax filer, income tax collection has grown significantly, showing that government is relying more on existing taxpayer. To address this, the government should consider taxing agricultural income, which makes up significant portion of the country's economy. This move could boost revenue without affecting smaller farmers. Moreover, simplifying the tax filing process and reducing income tax rates, particularly in the new tax regime, could enhance compliance. Boosting the formalization of the economy with the help of GST and improving information sharing between direct and indirect tax departments to identify high income tax evaders are also important steps to consider. So these are the things. Next is political paradox of employment. Now, as the next general election approaches, the concern rises about what might impact the BJP's electoral chances more. Uh, high food, fuel prices, or widespread in unemployment along with low income. Now, particularly in low paying jobs, officially India's unemployment rate is reported to be over 8%, but it's believed to be around 50% when considering the actual situation. Now, many who claim to be employed are working around 15 days a month for very little pay, support, struggling to support several people with their earning. This shift is the focus from asking, are you employed? to a more relevant question of how much do you earn in a month. Now, governments have traditionally concentrated on controlling inflation rather than addressing uh, 
employment concern this focus on inflation control has led to the neglect of employment issue and this pattern has deep rooted causes that have worsened under the modi government there's a widespread notion that low employment is tied to low investment while the investment rate in, has varied even if india were to achieve the investment rate seen in china it might still not see enough jobs due to technological advancement the issue lies in the fact that india's massive workforce far exceeds the potential job even with increased investment the situation parallels europe's situation in the 19th century where high investment coexisted with high unemployment rate leading to migration however today's op option of exporting labor as europe did is constrained by external restriction surprisingly political parties do not discuss employment much despite its critical impact while inflation always takes the political spotlight employment often remains under i mean overlooked so the next article is on the rubber act over here old plantations have hit yield and a census is needed so the debate ongoing the repealment of this uh, rubber act of 1947 and the introduction of rubber promotion and development bill ongoing since 22 has centered on the diminishing autonomy of the rubber board over the years the revised version of the bill titled the rubber uh, promotion and development bill of 23 is anticipated to garner diverse response from stakeholders however the focus on this legislative changes has diverted attention from declining state of natural rubber cultivation in india particularly in kerala amidst the ineffectiveness of various price stabilization initiative the significance of cost competitiveness has emerged within this context the age factor significantly impacts the yield of various rubber plantation planting materials in india now studies highlight that share, that the share of uneconomically aged major rubber plantation has increased due to the absence of a systemic replanting program the yield profile of natural rubber involves three phases which is yield increase almost 13 years of tapping yield stabilization 4 to 13 years of tapping and yield decline which is about 14 years of tapping the relative share of this phase determine both current production and future potential potential now regrettably the share of plantation in the yield decline phase has risen contributing to the decline in yield and production this scenario raises concern for policy makers aiming to reduce rubber imports short term improvement in yield are challenging due to unfavorable age composition reintroducing administered prices for uh, nr is problematic within international trade agreement to address these challenges creating a comprehensive rubber uh, census database is essential this database would offer critical information on planted clones age of consumption farming practices and marketing utilizing data from such a census could guide systematic replanting program potentially revising the rubber sector and overcoming issues tied to aging plantation next article what if auditors miss zeroing on a fraud what happens then it's a very very interesting article so the debate surrounding fraud detection highlights the challenges faced by auditors in identifying frauds within companies auditors often feel that in hindsight they could have detected the fraud if they were more vigilant and attentive to details uh although auditors are primarily responsible for expressing opinion on financial statement rather than detecting fraud they are required to report fraud suspicious suspicions if they have reason to believe fraud might have occurred now the national finance financial reporting authority nfra uh has taken disciplinary action against auditing firms that seemingly neglected their duty to report fraud suspicions A recent circular from NFRA emphasizes that statutory auditors are mandated to report fraud or suspected fraud if they observe suspicious activities or transactions that suggest fraud may be happening within a company. The process involves notifying the company's board or auditor audit committee and if necessary forwarding a report to the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. So over here The circular also advises auditors not to use resignation as an excuse to avoid responsibility and not to be influenced by legal opinions from companies. The NFRA's objective is to enhance financial reporting by holding auditors accountable while promoting compliance with its directives. NFRA's objective 
the NFRA's chairman emphasizes that NFRA's goal is to improve financial reporting and not to be seen as a villain. Auditors are advised that their audit documentation is crucial in protecting them. While auditor need not actively search for fraud during audits, they should rely on the work of others within the company's environment such as internal auditor, concurrent auditor, independent directors, and whistleblowers. The Companies Act encourages auditor to report suspicious of suspicions of fraud to the management and central government. However, the Whistleblower Protection Act, applicable mainly to public sector unit and public servants, needs strengthening to empower whistleblowers and protect them from retaliation. The future involves auditors being more cautious and thorough in documentation with NFRA focusing on providing advisories on accounting and auditing standards. That's mostly it. Also, it talks about go first in the IBC world uh, where they used IBC as a business trick to so that they, they don't get dragged to the court. It's, it's an interesting read. One can go through this one. Yeah. Okay.